I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about Gulp, Sketch 3, Bud, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a project called Gulp.js. This is the streaming build system written in JavaScript. Now, if you've heard of Grunt, it is pretty similar. It's just another noise that you might make. Uh, so Gulp.js takes the idea of Unix pipes and uses that to form a build system. So if we take a look at the get started link right here, you see it's uh, pretty easy to install. Just npm install it create a gulpfile.js, and then you are ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the recipes and articles section. So if we take a look at the API documentation, <laughs> if we want to, say, compile a list of JIT templates, for example, and see we can say gulp, we give it a source, and then after that, what's really interesting is the pipe command. We can pipe it into jade, minify, and then specify a destination. Now, if we go back here a little bit, we can see we have uh, the documentation right here, and it can do pretty much anything that Grunt can do right now. So you can give it some paths. Right now, it'll do a uh, compilation of your JavaScripts and images, and then it can also watch for changes in both your scripts and images. Now, for right now, it supports most of the things that Grunt does via plugins. It's a different take on using a build system like that. Uh, Grunt is a lot more imperative. This allows you to do more things with less code, so check it out if you're getting tired of Grunt. Very nice. Well, next up is a blog post called What's New in What is New in Sketch 3? And as the name implies, it goes over the new features in the recently released Sketch 3. First thing that's new in Sketch 3 is a new user interface. Now, if you're not familiar with Sketch, it's basically an alternative to Illustrator and Photoshop where you can edit imagery. So if you have Im images that you want to edit for use on your website, Sketch is an alternative to Adobe's products. So they have a new user interface, and that's kind of the theme of this Sketch 3 release is a reorganization or a refinement of what was already present in Sketch previously. So for example, they've moved a lot of things into the inspector and it's all just one level deep now. It used to have a couple different submenus and be a little bit confusing, but everything is where it belongs. Creating artboards is slightly different now. You can actually insert an artboard uh, that's pretty cool. Using uh, symbols. So there's this idea of symbols in fireworks, and the sketch team has listened to their users, as they're very good at doing, and included a feature that's similar to symbols in fireworks, and they've made it really easy to use. So that's pretty cool. Using layer styles is much easier now. Basically, it's just a refinement on what was previously there. I don't have a whole lot to say about this, but I basically just wanted to highlight the fact that Sketch exists, and it's an alternative to Photoshop and Illustrator. So if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to do so. Yeah, a ton of people are using it, and the Sketch team has done a great job. Yep. Uh, next up, we have a blog post called Introducing Bud. Now, Bud is a, another build tool similar to Grunt, uh, but different from, uh, what, what did we call that other one? It was... Uh, Gulp. Gulp, yeah. Similar to Gulp, uh, but this one's called Bud. Now, um, Bud lets you declare your sources in uh, a very declarative manner, and then it will build them for you. So here we define a target, which is going to be the distribution directory. We're going to take the style.css and all of the style templates, and this is everything we do to actually make that target. Well, we make the directory if it doesn't exist, and then we call the stylist command to output all of that there. Uh, now, this works in plain old JavaScript. We're showing CoffeeScript right there. Uh, now, the reason that this was built, the author says, is because he was getting tired of not having directions inside of his Grunt file. Now, he used Grunt, but he decided it wasn't explicit enough. 
Uh, why are we doing what we're doing? Well, we're going to declare everything, and that's what bud is for. Uh, so here's just some more examples as we go down the page. You can define binaries. So here he defines a binary, which is in the bin directory. It's called stylus. And then that is then something that you can declaratively use when defining the different targets. Now, once again, this supports most things and most, most plugins that grunt would or even gulp. So if gulp doesn't do it for you, check out bud. It could be, could be a good tool. You might even say, this bud's for you. Thanks, bud. Next up is Trianglify, which is a JavaScript library for creating these really cool triangle or polygon backgrounds using SVG imagery. So on the site here, I can just click for a new pattern. Whoa, look at that. What? It's pretty amazing. There's even some controls here that you can adjust if you want to get, say, different cell sizes or different amounts of noise in the background. Now, if I go back here, I can check out the GitHub page, and Trianglify uses the d3.js library. So there's a couple of ways to get Trianglify, and then to use it, you actually have to include d3.js, and then you include Trianglify, because it relies on d3. And then you can start to define these backgrounds using a number of different parameters. So first you create a new instance of Trianglify, and then you can define the width and height using the generate function. Now you could, of course, just put the body client width and body client height into the generate function, and it will create a background that is exactly matched to the background of the client browser. You can also do things like adjust the cell size, add noise, you can do different types of gradients, all sorts of really amazing options here for creating these low polygon look backgrounds, which is kind of starting to pick up some steam. I mean, flat, flat design has been pretty popular for a long time now, and this is starting to become kind of an evolution of that. Uh, there's uh, all sorts of, I guess, low poly uh, looks popping up, and this is one of them. Hmm, very cool. Next up, we have a really quick project called Multiline. This is a JavaScript library that lets you have multi-line strings in JavaScript. Now, if you are not using CoffeeScript, which supports multi-line strings, this multi-line library could be for you. Uh, it is sort of a pain to do multi-line strings in JavaScript. We see right here that if we want to get this, uh, this little bit of code right here in a multi-line string, look at, look at what we have to do. We have to define a string and then put a plus sign at the end of every single line to get that. Who wants to do that? Nobody. Not me. I don't want to do that. I'd much rather call this multi-line function, and then put all the, all the text in there. Now, um, it works pretty easily. You just wrap the text in a block comment, anonymous function, and a function call, and then, boom, you have your multi-line string. It's that easy to use. Like I said, not much to say, but cool project. Might be something to add to your projects if you want to. Or don't. Yeah, don't or don't. We, like, we're, not, we're not your boss. It's up to you. Yeah. Next up but it's is... there if you want to. <laughs> Next up if is you don't a, want to, you don't have to. Next up is a blog post called How to Use Steps in CSS Animations. Now, I will admit, even after reading this blog post, I had to reread it again to understand steps in CSS. This is not something I have used personally in any, any projects yet, uh, but it is pretty cool and worth understanding in case you do need to use it. Now, steps is a timing function in CSS animations. And to understand that, it's good to jump down to the code here. So if you are using the animation property, you can declare steps as a timing function or one of the values that you put into the animation. Then inside of steps, there's two parameters here. So I'm going to scroll back up. And those two parameters are the number of steps and the direction. Now, the direction will just default to end, and that's an optional value that will basically determine the direction of the steps or which, which way they start and end. But the number of steps is what's important to understand here. Now, the example that made me understand this is the example of a CSS clock. Now, if you wanted to animate a clock here and you wanted the, one of the hands to go around uh, 
every 60 seconds, you would say, you know, I want this animation to last for 60 seconds, and I want to transform the second hand 360 degrees. So you do that over a 60 second period. Now, if you want the second hand to actually stop on one of the tick marks here, you can add steps as a timing function and it will actually stop at 60 different intervals throughout that entire animation. So it will what? stop at every tick mark. So if we go to preview here, here's an example of exactly that. Instead of just animating smoothly and going all the way around as it would normally, you can add steps and it will stop for every, uh, I guess, interval in that, uh, in that animation. So pretty cool, very great article for understanding this. It is a complex concept, but it is very useful if you need to use that in your projects. Wow. Do you see that paw prints demo? I did. It's got, uh, it's got some paws just walking across the screen. Look at that. I really needed to pause for a second and make sure that was done in CSS. Next up, we have a project called Pace. This is an automatic page load progress bar written in JavaScript. So here is the site as we see it now. Watch what happens if I reload. You can see Pace in action. Whoa, look at that. It's wow, all filling what in. what is happening? Yeah. Um, so what is Pace? This is actually really cool. It's a CSS theme and uh, progress indicator to see what's going on on your site. What in the world does all that mean? Well, these days you may have a website with a lot of different assets, JavaScript, images, DOM loading, Ajax calls, all that. And what Pace does is automatically keeps track of all that for you and automatically loads a progress bar while that is happening. Now, check out the different themes that we have here. Got the minimal theme, which you can see, just a little bar at the top of the site. Got a little, little uh, swirly bar right there, not really sure what that's called. Barbershop, Mac OS X or OS X as we sometimes say here. Kind of like this corner indicator right here. Uh, there is honestly not much to do on this project. It is so simple to use. All you would do is include the JavaScript and the CSS and you can tell it which different options you want. Uh, by default it supports Ajax, DOM elements, um, the document ready state, and also event lag. So once you're done, boom, and you are good to go. Just include the pace options. That's it. Anyway, super cool project. Really, really digging it just because it can be really cumbersome to keep track of all that yourself and add a loading indicator. Uh, just use this project because it is good to go. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a project called Pesticide. It's for faster CSS layout debugging. Now, normally when you're doing CSS debugging, you might bring up the Chrome DevTools like this, and then you go to the inspector, and you highlight the element that you want to inspect to figure out why it's being laid out in a certain way, or you might look at the margin and padding as it's being computed by the browser just to try to diagnose different issues. That can take a lot of time, though, because you're constantly opening the DevTools, you're constantly going to the inspector to look at stuff or you're right clicking on items and choosing inspect element. It can take a lot of time and it's a lot of clicks. With Pesticide, you just apply it to your page and you can even do it as a Chrome extension if you want and it will add an outline to all of your page elements and that makes it really easy to debug stuff quickly. So, for example, if you're doing local development, you can just set the pesticide debug variable in SAS to true, and then it will outline everything like this. Not a whole lot to say about it, but it is a pretty great time saver, and it will actually highlight things differently depending on what type of element it is. So, pretty handy stuff. Nice. So, uh, I think that's about all we have time for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talk about, check out the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes and rate us. We are the Treehouse Show. Also, for a free 30 day trial of Treehouse, go ahead and click on the link in the show notes on YouTube. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com and use that link to get a free month. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.